Mission Hope Inspirational stories of faith and triumph Life's many upheavals, sharp curves, twists and turns, the challenging circumstances coming right at you, are, non-stop. The inner wars within, are outside your control and feel overwhelming. You feel alone, and, the seemingly endless battles rage on. You feel like you have lost all hope, and faith, questioning. Why me? Why now? How can I handle another blow? The answers you're seeking are in this collection of 20, uplifting stories in this book. Within its golden pages, from the deep confines of their hearts and souls, these extraordinary authors have opened up and are here to assist you in navigating the deep, daunting, and dark waters that you are facing. Each story is unique in its experience, but similar in the fact that through everything presented to them in life, these authors have found the way back to success, peace, and joy through hope and faith. These authors have turned tragedy into tranquility once again. Now, they are here to empower you, to shift from what once was fear and failure into the future of your dreams. They offer as a gift to you the freedom to choose your destiny. Now, it's time to turn the key and walk through the door. Hear from the authors themselves, as they share their journey and story with you, here, on Living the Next Chapter. Hey everyone, welcome back to Living the Next Chapter. I have another amazing author, part of Shar Murphy's newest book, and we're here to celebrate the mission of hope. And we're talking more focused on faith for book two. And Sarah's joining today to talk about her chapter. Uh, she has two of her Velcro dogs in the room with her. So if you hear any snoring, it's not me falling asleep. No, no, it's the dogs maybe enjoying our time together. And Sarah, so glad to have you, your two puppies with you. Welcome to Living the Next Chapter. Thank you, Dave. I really appreciate being here. It's amazing. Can you introduce the dogs that are with you as well? For those listening, they may hear a dog here and there. We want to welcome them as well. So my Velcro dogs are Reuben and Barkley, otherwise known as the R and B brothers. And they follow me wherever I go, including my home office. If I leave them outside the door, they will howl. And so I let them come in, but the problem is they get so comfortable, they like to fall asleep. And so you might hear just a little bit of gentle snoring. Um, Dave has not fallen asleep. I have no, not no. fallen asleep. <laughs> okay, um, okay, good. We're not, yeah, and hopefully we're not boring you. It's just the dogs have gotten so comfortable that you might hear some snores. And I hope it makes you laugh. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> Thank you. So yeah, just in case it happens, that's what's going on behind the scenes. Neither myself or Sarah has actually nodded off. We are enjoying being together and being on the podcast. Uh, it's great to have you here, Sarah. I really appreciate you taking time to do this. And you're part of Shar's new book. Can you tell me how this all happened? How did you connect with Shar and become one of the authors in Shar's newest book? Sure, I would be happy to talk about that. So I originally had met Elizabeth Arabe, who is also an author in Mission Hope, Volume 2, and she has the first chapter. And she let me know that Shar was creating this book, and she told me a little bit about the project and the first book as well, and asked me if I wanted to have an introduction to Shar to see if uh, I wanted to write a chapter as well. So she introduced me to Shar, and everything went well and i ended up writing a chapter about um an experience where fear could have taken over but it didn't and faith pulled me through and that was how it happened amazing i know that when i've talked to the other authors a part of this book that there's like a little community kind of being built within the author community for the book where authors are talking back and forth and doing life together how has your experience been working with the other authors and having this community around the book? Oh, the other authors are fantastic. And I'm so glad that Shar has set up that community because it is so important. We are all able to collaborate and help with marketing the book and making the book a much bigger mission, so to speak. We're all there to support the book. 
and uplift this idea. And it's wonderful to have a community of authors rather than doing this alone. So it's been have a you ever, Yeah. Have you ever written any books on your own prior to working with Shar on this book? I have ghostwritten 10 psychology books. I've been a magazine editor and I've written a, many magazine articles prior to this and also worked on psychology blog posts. Wow. And then the whole world of ghostwriting, I find that really interesting. I have a friend who's a ghostwriter and there's certain things he can tell me and there's certain things he can't tell me about what he does. But I just find it very interesting and I'm very curious about that world. Uh, how long have you been ghostwriting for? Since 2011. Okay. Wow. Yeah. So, Those are pretty big topics to write about as well. That's interesting. Yes. Yes. The The topic that I've mainly written about has to do with uh, relationships, with marriages, and with all the different things that can go on within marriage and all the different subtopics there. And those became books. And I, I wrote those for some influencers. And those books, those original 10 books still sell to this day. They still sell very well, which is good. And Amazing. I've been writing for about 30 years in total. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So what about being a ghostwriter is uh, appealing for you as an author? I love the idea that there are people out there who would love to have a book in their life and would love to be published authors, but they don't quite know how the process works. And sometimes they might find, they might, they, excuse me, sometimes they may not find their best expression is in writing. Maybe they're more comfortable with speaking and yeah. they want their ideas out there. And so I can basically be the person who puts their ideas into writing so that they get their dream of being a published author out there. And they get, most importantly, they get their message out there. That's the most important part. So I basically Amazing. describe and um, it's an honor to help people become published authors and realize their dream. That's amazing. So with that many years of writing experience, there's authors listening to this podcast that are brand new. They're just starting out and they're learning the craft of becoming an author. Do you have any words of wisdom or tips that you can give to a brand new author to kind of give them the motivation and encouragement to keep going? Absolutely. In fact, I'm happy to give them the formula that was successful for me. And so the first part of that was I took many writing classes in college to hone my skills. And I had a mentor. I had a wonderful writing mentor named Margaret Demoplin, and she was a published author of short stories. And she really believed in my work as a student at the university and told me just to keep writing, no matter how many rejection letters, no matter how down I got about the possibility of being published or not just to keep writing. And so those words stayed with me. And I started out by volunteering to write for publications. So that was how I got my foot in the door was I wrote for some local newspapers in Seattle that were about success stories in the community. So I volunteered for that just to get some writing jobs. And I would volunteer to write blog posts once blogs came along. And then that segued into people asking me, hey, would you like to be paid to be a writer? Well, sure, that would be great. Yeah. And so it's uh, it took a lot of patience. It takes time. And never give up because if you keep writing and if you keep putting yourself out there and especially volunteering to write for different organizations, you are going to get your name out there. And pretty soon people are going to ask if they can pay you to write something professionally. That is how I got my foot in the door. And that is how I continue. It's nice that that opens the door for you because I think that's probably the one of the hardest thing is 
is how to get your name into the world and and get and get your writings out into the world. You, and then the magazine side as well. Have you been writing magazines for over that 30 per- year period of time as well? No, that really started in 2014 and those were paid mm-hmm. articles as well. Thank you. So, and that was a lifestyle magazine in my community and I was responsible for writing a lot of the feel good and the success stories in our community. That was my focus because that was the thing that really drives me is interviewing people about how they've overcome tremendous challenges and then bringing that message to the community to inspire hope in others. So I had been doing that for a local magazine because I just wanted to bring hope to anybody who was reading our local magazine. Excellent. What is the um, what is the title of your chapter in Char's book? It is Living in Fearless Faith. Nice. It is Can you talk? Go ahead. Yeah. Me. Can you talk a little bit about the chapter and what we're going to see there? Sure. This is a personal experience that I had when I was coming out of the grocery store on a weekend night, and. It's basically about talking to somebody who had ran, who had run out of options, who had completely run out of options and who had hit rock bottom and who was possibly going to do something harmful to himself and how I talked that person out of it. Hmm. And this was a total stranger to me. And it was interesting how that stranger was drawn to me, how they found me the talk that we had, how that changed his life and how my faith really served me throughout that process. And this chapter is very timely in terms of world events. I will say that, that it's very timely. Even though this happened in 2019, it's very timely to some of the world events that that we're seeing right now. Talk about being in the right place at the right time. Like you had no expectation that day going to the store to pick up a few things that you would even have this interaction. But for you to be willing and open to let that happen, where a lot of people are so busy, caught up in what they're doing, they don't even recognize or acknowledge the people around them. You had that moment of clarity to say, this person needs help and they need my, they need my attention right now. That, um, that's amazing. Thank you. He was actually standing next to my car, even though he was a stranger, and waiting as if he were waiting for me, even though he were a stran- he was a stranger at the time. And so it was just I didn't really have a choice. There was a stranger standing at my car who needed help. And it was how am I going to make the best of this situation? How am I going to help this person? What's going on here? And it was really about being in the moment and connecting with him to find out what was going on and then figuring out how could I help them. And so that is what the chapter is about. It's amazing. And without giving away everything in the chapter, because people want, I want you to read this, this chapter for sure, but there was a change in this person's life as in, in relation to your conversation with them. And it's exciting to know that we can have an impact on somebody like your story, right? Yes. There was a huge change in this person's life. They were at rock bottom when they were standing by my car and they may have been ready to do something quite dangerous when they were standing by my car. But the end result was a life that was truly changed. And I got to see that come to fruition. It's amazing. So for those people reading your chapter, what is kind of your hope in the world that we're living right now and all the things that are happening globally? There's so much going on in the world that I think everyone's getting a little nervous, a little scared. Um, What is your message to those reading this chapter that you hope your words can can help in our current situation and climate? Well, I'm going to come back to a quote, and it's a quote that 
I started this chapter with by Edwin Markin, Markham. Sorry. So the quote is by Edwin Markham. And I started my chapter with this quote. He drew a circle that shut me out. Heretic, rebel, a thing to flout. But love and I had the wit to win. We drew a circle and took him in. And again, that's a quote by Edwin Markham. That quote was one that my mom spoke of often when I was growing up. So anytime there was conflict when I was growing up, my mom would basically speak that quote. And so it was something that was ingrained in me from childhood that we have a choice. Even if somebody is shutting us out, even if somebody is in a hateful state of mind, we do not have to respond that way. We can respond with love and we can be the one who draws the circle that takes somebody in. And when we do that, that actually changes lives. And we have that choice. We're not stuck in a world of violence. That's that's a mental construct, being stuck in violence. I mean, it's something that's happening externally right now in the world, but on a personal level, are we going to be stuck in that mental construct or are we going to be the person who acts with love, who acts with understanding, who seeks to understand another, and then who finally draws that circle to take somebody in? I heard somebody say along the same lines that in our world right now, we need to build less fences to keep people out and a longer table and invite more people into our world. And that's kind of the solution that we need to be working our way towards. Don't protect what you have, but be free and open to share with others and and make room for people like you've done through your story. Thank you. Yes, I love that. And yes, this is a time where I think it's essential to make room for others in our lives and to create a seat at the table for everybody, especially when somebody appears to be the opposite of us. It's very right. important to create a seat at the table and to get to know that person because there's really no such thing as somebody being the opposite of us. When we think about it, we are all connected by having the same human needs. Every human on this planet needs love. We need connection. We need understanding. We need compassion. We need friends to talk to. Of course, we need food, shelter, and clothing. But really, that deep connection and that sincere, that deep and sincere connection with others is what feeds our soul. And so knowing that everybody in the world needs those very same things to feed their souls, there's really nobody who is the opposite of us. That's just another social construct. And we can either believe it or we don't have to. We can make room at the table for people. We can draw the circle to bring them in. It's all about our choice. No matter what somebody does, we still have the choice to respond in love and with unconditional compassion. I like it. I like it. Um, Sarah, one of the things I've been asking of each of the guests from book two and also in book one when they come on the podcast is if they have a message that they want to direct specifically and straight to Shar, who is going to listen to this episode. And what's been happening, the feedback I'm getting from Shar is she will now reach for a tissue because she's going to cry right now as she hears you talk about your relationship with her and the book and the community that she's building. I just want to encourage Shar that having this opportunity to create, bring all these authors together build this little community of authors and share a message of hope right, and faith with the world right now. It's what we need. We need more of this. We need a million Shars. It's what we need. We need a million Sarahs in the world and the world would be quite different than it is right now. But if you have a message directly for Shar, what would you like to say if she was sitting here and I'm not here, what would you like to say directly to Shar? Shar, I know that this book was really given to you 
by God. It's almost as if they were angel messages whispered to you. And you could have chosen to not listen, but you decided to listen and you decided to start on the first book. And I know that you have plans for future books as well. And as I've told you before, this is something that I believe that was given to you by God and that is going to unfold before you because it's a purpose. It's a purpose that was given to you. These books are a mission in themselves for you, and you are the person to do it. And I just wanted to thank you for listening to that voice in your mind to take up this task, because these books make the world a better place. This community that you are building makes the world a better place and shows people that there's a different way to do things. And I believe that anybody who reads the books will have their lives impacted in huge ways. And I just wanted to thank you for being the one to take up that task and all the hard work that you do behind the scenes to make it seem seamless for the rest of us. But you work so hard to bring this to the world. And I cannot thank you enough for doing this, Char. I love it. Sarah, thank you. The other thing I would love to do is to give you the opportunity to to let us know how we can connect with you as an author. Um, maybe there's a magazine that's looking for somebody to submit something. Maybe there's someone who has questions about ghostwriting, or we have questions just about your chapter and what you do and who you are. Is there a great way for us to connect with you? Where are you most active online? How do we do that? Sure. I absolutely love to connect with new people. And you can find me on LinkedIn under the name Sarah Polyakov. You can also email me at Sarah Polyakov at iCloud.com. So that would be the best email address, Sarah Polyakov at iCloud.com. And please don't hesitate to reach out. I just love meeting new people. I love answering new questions. Connect to me on LinkedIn since that is where I'm most active. Send me a DM there if you'd like. And Sarah, thank you for including the puppies today as well. I've heard a couple little snores here and there. It's like the coolest thing ever to have them join us for the podcast as well. Awesome. I need to send you photos of them so you can. Make yes. Them. <laughs> yeah, we will use that and, and promote the book with the, with them as well. Yeah. Yeah. They, uh, they should probably have their pictures on the podcast because they have been here contributing with lots of soft snores. <laughs> they are now alumni of living the next chapter. They I'm so are. happy that they were here. This is good. Thank you, Dave. <laughs> Sarah, thank you so much for making time to do this. I really appreciate you coming on. And uh, I'm looking forward to, to having more interactions with you in the future as well. Thank you, Dave. And likewise. Thank you. Everyone, all the information will be in the show notes. When you buy a copy of Mission Hope, make sure you leave an amazing review for all these great authors who have contributed, shared their story, and put their lives out into a chapter form. Leave a great review. Tell everybody, buy a few books. Share with your friends and family as well. And again, Sarah, thank you so much for doing this. Thank you, Dave. I really appreciate you. Hey, just jumping on here at the end. Thank you so much for checking out this episode, Living the Next Chapter, talking about Mission Hope Volume 2. You definitely want to pick up a copy of this book. Head over to OurMissionHope.com. Our, O-U-R, MissionHope.com. All the information in the show notes. Get a copy of this book. Get one for yourself. Get one for your best friend. And let's encourage these authors as they write and share their stories with us. If you want to connect with me, my name is Dave. Livingthenextchapter.com Livingthenextchapter.com I would love to have you reach out through the website. Let me know what you think of this episode. What you think of the podcast. Let's encourage our fellow authors and let's do something great. Thank you for being here on the podcast. Again, it's the second book from our great friend, Char Murphy. 
Mission Hope, inspirational stories of faith and triumph at OurMissionHope.com. Thanks for being here. Catch you on the next one.